In this video, I'm going to do a couple of symbolizations from multi-place predicate logic. Uh, my approach to these symbolizations is going to be the same. I'm always going to sort of work inside out and try and identify the main sort of predicates, the main breaks, and then move on. Everyone borrows stuff from people, but nobody lends stuff to everyone. Okay, so right off, I should see that uh, but is sort of an important main connective here. And when I realize that there's a but, which is an and, uh, I have to just ask whether or not um, my left conjunct and right conjunct are talking about the exact same literal things. Well, here I have everyone borrows stuff from people, and I say nobody lends stuff to everyone. Now, while I'm using similar words, it's actually not talking about the exact same thing. There's no reference words or pronouns or anything like this. So essentially, I can symbolize one half separately from the other, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, when I symbolize in multiplace predicate logic, uh, what I look for are the key relations. So here, the key relation from the first part is borrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work outside in. So borrows is, sorry, inside out. Ooh. So borrows is the B relation, and it has three slots. Now, these slots have to have letters in them, and I don't really care, so I'm just going to arbitrarily assign them to x, y, and z. So if I want to say x borrows y from z, I just need to fill it in. So first, x then is supposed to be everyone. Now, I just need to ask how do I symbolize everyone? Is that people? Yes. I know it's the letter x. And then what I need to ask is, is this all people or some people? Well, everyone is clearly all people, so I have for all x, f, x. Now, what is it that they're borrowing? Stuff? Am I talking about all stuff or some stuff? It seems pretty clear that they're borrowing some stuff. And then finally, I have from people. So again, I have another f predicate, and that's going to be z. But the question is, is this existential or universal? Am I saying everyone borrows stuff from all people, or everyone borrows stuff from some random generic person? And it seems that I'm talking about that. So now that I'm ready to symbolize this, I can just sort of go ahead. One thing I do want to pay attention to is what do I introduce first, x, y, or z? I actually know that I need to introduce all of them before I state b, x, y, z, and I do want to spend the time to ask which one. The reason why is depending on the order of the quantifiers, I have a different meaning. If I actually introduce the existential firsts before a universal, this is a specific object. If I introduce it the other way around, universal followed by existential. This is just some generic object. It could be specific, but not necessarily. So if it says everyone borrows stuff from people, am I talking about some exact stuff from some exact person? No, I'm talking about generic. So that means I do want to introduce the universal first. So I'm basically just going to go left to right here using the canonical form. fx arrow. Now I will introduce ey open bracket g, y, and, which is the canonical form. Now I introduce the z, e, z, open bracket, f, z, and, and now I'm ready to write my relation of borrowing. Okay, that's the first half of the sentence. It says, x is all people, y is uh, some stuff, z is some person, and all people borrow some stuff from some person. There you go. Now I want to say nobody lends stuff to everyone. Now an important difficulty of this is the word nobody, which we will highlight. And then I will also highlight the key uh, predicate here. So now I need to do the exact same thing. Well, let's just go through this pretty quickly. Because I closed the scope of all, everything here, x, y, z are available to me again, so I'll just use them. If you don't like that, you can use three other letters. Uh, x, a lends b to c. So x is actually nobody. Y is stuff. Z is everyone. So everyone is easy. That's for all Z. Uh, that's an FZ. Stuff, just like we talked about before, that's an existential. And how do I say nobody? Well, there's a couple of ways I could say it. But one way I could say is it's not the case that there exists a person. And this is F. And that's the way I'm going to do it. OK. So how do I do this? Uh, well, I'm going to introduce everyone first. So I'll say for all Z, bracket F, Z, arrow. Uh, then I'm free to introduce whatever I want. So 
um, I'll say stuff gy and and now I'll say it's not the case that there exists someone bracket fx and who lends the stuff to everyone close 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 okay that is the symbolization of this there are a couple sort of worthwhile tricks to think about think about how I went from the inside relation out and also how I thought about the order of the quantifiers and lastly dealing with negation there's a variety of different ways to do it you didn't have to negate the existential here uh, I could have said for everyone they don't lend or stuff like that or there's no stuff there's actually a variety of different ways to express the negative uh, if you didn't get exactly what I got that's not a big deal let's move on to question two a good person does not perform acts that harms others this one is a little bit more difficult because there's actually sort of like a nested type of uh, relation, which I'll explain in a moment. So what's the key thing going on here? It's actually the doing. Well, this is a sort of annoying stylistic variant. Does perform, does not perform, or does perform is just the D predicate. Now, of course, I need to be careful about the not as well. Now, what we'll see is when we do the breakdown, it's actually going to be slightly more complicated. Let's start with the does. So we have x, y. So what is x? x is good person. Are we talking about all good people or some good people? We are talking about all good people. So good and people. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Now what about y? y is a doing b, good person does acts that harm others. So this part needs to be my acts that harm others. Now the acts part is actually pretty easy. Are we talking about all acts that harm others or some acts that harm others? Well, it seems that a good person doesn't do uh, any acts that harm others. Um, so I haven't dealt with the negation, so actually this is a bit weird. Uh, I don't really know which one it is. I'll just leave it for now. But I do know that it's y and that y is an act. But I also know that this act is supposed to harm others. So I need to incorporate the harming of others into my description of the act, which means I need to break down and analyze the H predicate as well, which also has two slots. This slot is supposed to be others, and this slot is supposed to be the act. Well, this is okay because the act is already defined as the letter Y, so I don't need to do anything for this. But I do need a new letter for others, which is Z. Now, others is obviously other people. So it's an act that harms any all other people or some other people. Well, it seems to be some other people. So that's this people. But there is one thing that I need to add here. Others implies that it's not yourself. So I'm going to add and x does not equal z. And that is pretty important. Okay, so I basically just done an analysis of the question, adding in lots of sort of variables in order to try and understand the scope. Now I'm ready to symbolize. And I'm just going to go straight across. A good person does not perform acts that harm others. So for anything, if you're a good person, if you're good and you're a person, then how do I say does not perform acts that harm others? I could say there isn't an act that harms others that you perform. That is one way of doing it. Let's try it. So it's not the case that there exists an act and that act harms others. Oops, I can't say that yet. I want to say that acts harm others, but before I say that, I actually need to introduce others. And Z is an other and the act harms another and now I want to say and the good person does the act. Count all the brackets and close them all. So when I look at this, this says if you're a good person then it's not the case that there is an act that harms others and you do it. Okay, that's a good person does not perform acts that harm others. You could move this negation around to a variety of different places. I could say for all acts that harm others, it's not the case that you do it, for example. 
um, or for all the acts that you do, it's not the case that it harms others. There's lots of different ways to incorporate the negation. You just need to sort of think about it and make sure what you write actually reflects the symbolization. Okay, that's a couple to think about there. Uh, practice. Good luck.